Okay, you know what? I, I can't stop carrying this knife. I can't stop carrying this knife. I really, really like this knife. I really do. This is, uh, this is so insane. It's a frame lock flipper. It's titanium. It's S35 VN steel. If we can get the camera to show it to you. Um, this is the ZD006. And it's, it's HX Outdoors. That is the, that's the company. And they have a whole line of knives. Some of them are kind of just cheap and cheesy. You know, I mean, well, I shouldn't say cheesy. Some of them are very uh, inexpensive. This is not one that is. This is muy more expensive. This is a titanium, like I said, frame lock flipper. Your lock up on this uh, is about mm, 20%, maybe, maybe. And if you'll take a look at this, okay, see that insert? It's just kind of really well integrated into that lock bar. Really well done. Uh, very good machine work. The fit and finish is very good on this knife. And uh, this whole knife makes me not think of HX Outdoors, okay? It makes me think of a different company. In any case, we'll get to that in a little bit. Comes in this box. I mean, it's kind of badass, isn't it? I mean, it's a magnetic uh, thing on the front. And oh yeah, make sure you read this carefully because that's very important. <laughs> I'm kidding you, okay? If you can read that, you're a better man than I am. Or at least more knowledgeable. Uh, so this comes in this... Uh, Oh my God, I guess this is compatible without about any carry system you need to uh, strap it to. Your belt, the backpack, whatever. You got this uh, that runs through here, cinches up, all kinds of craziness in here. Including, you know, the knife comes in here. Obviously, I took it out. Crazy knife. Comes in a black wash too, you know, so you can get this whole knife in black wash, which is, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I mean, it's, that would not, this would not be a bad knife for, for a black wash deal. Um, but I just couldn't stay away from this. This was such a, uh, a, a natural tie look. Um, wow. Big knife too. So when I got this knife, I saw the specs on gear best. Okay. So here's the deal, okay? So it's GearBest, HX Outdoors, um, ZD006, right? Frame lock flipper, blah, blah, blah. 159 bucks. I missed the deal when they came out. They came out with a discount uh, code on them at one point in time, which maybe I missed or maybe I just don't know the code, but it knocked it down to 119. I'll tell you what, brothers. This is an awesome knife for 119. In fact, it's a awesome knife for 159 as far as I'm concerned. Um, nothing more there. Second page. There's your brand. Uh, blade length. Uh, all your uh, parameters in uh, metrics. See, and here it says 9 centimeter blade length. Okay. So, oh, hold on. Before I go to the nine centimeter situation. There you go. Black or silver. Had to grab the silver. Mmm. Black's a thinker though. That's a good looking knife in black. Good looking knife in black. There's more pages, but I only just printed these out. I just wanted to get to that point. Now, let's look at this blade and let's see what nine centimeters looks like. Okay? That's what they said. Nine centimeters. Nine, nine centimeters. Nine centimeters is the cutting edge. It ain't the blade length. The blade length is three and seven eighths. And somebody got this knife and they came on to, to uh, give kind of feedback because you were almost at 10 centimeter long. I mean, we're right there. It ain't nine centimeters. That's cutting edge, maybe. And they go, oh, 
I didn't expect it to be this big. I'm not going to follow up with a comment on that. And uh, eight and seven eighths, almost, right? It's over three quarter. So it's coming up on nine inches. I mean, all day long, 22 and a half centimeters. That is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. And you know what? I bought it a little kind of disappointed that it wasn't going to be a bigger knife. And I thought, eh, it'll be three and a half. I mean, you know, eh, whatever. <sighs> Came in at almost four. And wow, I love this. I love the size of this. Almost nine inches overall. When I got this out of the box, though, and the detent's good on this knife. Detent's good. Flips great. Jumping on the flipper tab. There's your blade stop. Got all kinds of pretty angles milled in here, doesn't it? Here, here. Look at this. Look at that angle there. How that just kind of goes down and then lips back up a little bit. Or around at least. Over that edge. Rounded. How nicely that's done. I mean, and you've got this like floating backspacer. And it just looks, it looks uh, tough. It looks kind of bad boy in a way. I mean, this is really in your face, industrial gears, crunching kind of, you know, that kind of thing. There's everything in here that reminds you of, of, of industrial bolts and nuts and fixtures and things. You know, you've got all these slots milled in here. And holes put through some of these and these milled across. I mean, it just looks so raw and industrial. And I like that. That appeals to me. Look at the blade. You know, the shape as well. Yeah, let's see if it'll cut a piece of paper too. Wow. Oh yeah, okay, so it's really nice and sharp. It really is. What is that? Yeah, let's take a look. We need, I need to, I think this is at least, a, yeah, it's at least a half inch. Okay, so it is, it's nice. It feels good in the hand. 13.3, let's get to the blade stock. Yeah, you go, four. So that'd be 0.15 something. Good thick blade stock. S35VN steel, nicely done and milled, okay? That when I got this out though, it seemed like, can you hear that? It's kind of, let me, I don't know if I can get it close enough to my mic. There was that kind of sound of like just two smooth pieces of metal kind of rubbing together. It's a little different than a lot of knives that that I've flipped. And so I thought, do I have something in here? Is there a little bit of grit or something from manufacturing that's in there? So I took it apart. Uh, there's not much... There's not much to take. Lanyard hole, by the way, as well. And it's tubed, you know. I mean, it's enclosed through the backspacer. Really cool. Um, so I took it apart. That and that. That's it, folks. That's all, folks. And what's interesting is when I loosened this one up, uh, all of a sudden, this screw fell out the back. So this screw goes... In, this is a tube that's threaded inside, and this screw screws in to this tube that goes through here. How cool is that? Well, I guess that's got the, uh, I guess that's got the pocket clip anchored. So I took that out, took that out, popped it off, pulled it apart, and uh, yeah, there's bearings and stuff, but I took the bearings, I took, you know, everything, and then they're, um, you know, like, oh crap, I should have brought the picture in. In any case, um, so they're, like like brass 
uh, and their bearings enclosed in, in kind of a, a brass casing. And then, of course, uh, the other side is the race where the bearings make contact on the other side, like a washer with a, you know, area. Uh, so it, they're, they're captured bearings. In any case, I took it apart. I took everything and wiped it down. But you know what? I didn't find any debris. And then I touched it with a little bit of lube, put it back together, adjusted the pivot, you know, to the way I like it. And it still makes that same kind of, you know, noise. And you know what? I think it's just the way it is. I think it's just the way it is. Okay. And that's okay. I mean, the action's great on it. I mean, the action's nice. Lock bar, easy to disengage, not, not a huge differential in the scales, but it is not difficult to disengage. And depending on how you have the pivot adjusted, uh, that's really good. Uh, well, you can do that. I think I actually was able to gravity flip this. Yeah, okay. So it's around though. It's still got pretty good detent. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's a seven, a solid seven on my scale of one to ten, as far as detent goes. I mean, you just as long as you just pull this down. I mean, it's coming out. It's gonna come all the way out. You're not gonna fail it. Okay, even lazy flip. Okay, now. Okay, so you saw the HX outdoors. All that kind of stuff. And I go, you know what? You know what this looks like? This knife looks like this knife. Reich, Thor 3. Now, this knife is not an integral handle. But, come on, man. That's that knife. Now, this has got that little kind of teardroppy. And this does not around the pivot, okay? But look at the blade. Look at the blade. See, you're not able to see this higher ground part here. Same blade. You know, same choil up front here. Which, by the way, that's really handy. And you've got good jimping here on top. But, you know, look at the cutaways. I mean, the cutaways here, there's six. Here, there's two. You know, look at the, uh, look at the uh, lanyard hole. Now, it looks like they let you go right and left hand with the pocket clip. Here, they're not doing that necessarily at all. I think this is... And I checked with my Chinese blog guy, and he said, yes, this is made by Reich. This knife is made by Reich. Okay? That's what I suspected when I saw it. That's why I ordered it. I didn't really know anything about HX Outdoors. But, I mean, look at the, the specs on this one. Yeah. Okay? Five ounces. Let's see what this weighs. Of course, that's an integral, so... That's different. I got a buddy who bought that Thor 3 Integral. It's freaking 550 bucks. You know? This is 159. So 5.7 ounces. Okay. I mean, it's a chunk of change. It is. 161 grams. It's, it's reasonable. And I've been carrying it. I just can't not carry it. I just... I'm just fascinated with this. I mean, you know, and he paid 550 for the Integral. And I'm going, no, I don't have an Integral, but I've got a Reich Thor 3, basically the same knife. Oh, well, let me throw this at you. This'll, this'll get it cooking. Okay, so I'll put the link to this too. So here's Reich Knife Russia. Um, you don't have to learn how to read that to see the pictures. That's all I look for anyhow, pictures. Okay, so on their site, what? There you go. There's the six slots. This is this knife. That's, uh, that's some crazy anno work. But I know this knife is begging, begging for some pimping. Look at that. 
So I'll put the link to this and you can look and go, new members of the family. I'm just saying, I mean, they've got other knives, you know, that are the normal Reich stuff. But this one, this, you know, 160 bucks, you can get the Thor 3, only it's not integral. But other than that, it looks like the same knife to me. Now, if you look at this on DH Gate and AliExpress, whew, um, it's at least 110, and I, I mean 210, and most of them are about 228, the sites. Uh, so Gear Best is the best deal. And I got mine in just uh, about mm, 16 days, so a little over two weeks. So GearBest is redeeming themselves with me a little bit because, oof, oh, it's been tough in the past. Oh, with the shipping. Crazy, crazy stuff. But in any case, so I just, I don't know. I, I know. I, I've probably lost my mind a little bit. But as far as I'm concerned, I really like this knife. I just think this is slick. And it is sexy. And, you know, we got some family members, right? Yes, we do. And this is the 1701. This is the 1508. And this, this one married outside the family. <laughs> but look at the difference. I mean, talk about a ginormous knife. I mean, it's not really necessarily longer. Well, let's go pivot to pivot. Yeah, it's a little bit longer blade wise. But I mean, it's just a, because this is almost nine inches and this is almost nine inches. So they should be, but is this more imposing in so many ways? It is. It is. Same thickness of stock, both S35VN, titanium frame lock flippers, pivots. Look at the pivots. You not think that these came from the same factory? Look at this. Look at how they did the insert in here on the lock bar. Look at that one too. The exact same, exact same method of putting that insert in there. Just to me. And you know, my blogger goes, no, it's made by Reich. So he's pretty confident of that. It doesn't, I couldn't find anything where they actually said that other than the Russian knife, uh, Reich. Uh, so I don't know. You tell me. I'm just saying, this was cool. And could this get anode? I mean, you could do everything with this. The These cutouts could be a different color than this. And, you know, I mean, I don't have to go through that with you. But I'm just saying, uh, that is a big, it's, it's a lot more threatening looking than these are. I mean, this is just uh, some stuff. And the action's good. I mean, I blasted it with some CLP. And, and worked with it. I mean, just, you know, flipped it for a while. Uh, after I, you know, I uh, took it apart, put a little bit of lube on it because I blasted it with CLP and this and that. And then I thought, you know what? No, no, no I'm going to take it apart. And I did take it apart. And, and I thought I would get some kind of residue that was in there or something, but there wasn't. It was clean. So... I guess it was just a matter of flipping it a few times and it just keeps getting better. But you know, it's 159 bucks. It's not 550. So just saying, uh, I think it's good for the price. Um, and HX Outdoors, there's another knife that they do that's titanium. And I think VG10, I got that on order. I'm going to check that out. And I think I'm going to check out a couple of their budget knives. And I got them on order. So we'll see what they're like. But I'm not thinking they make their own. I think they're having them. They're putting their brand on them. And various other uh, manufacturers are making their knives. But this. Yes, it is. It's all that in a bag of chips. Thank you for joining me. Whew. Had to get this one off my chest. Wow, it's so good. You got to get two of them. <laughs> Uh, I did, actually. <laughs> I've got a second one in the other room. Uh, that's a long story, though. Thank you so much.
Take care. We love them knives. Stay sharp.